five. Um, Werner Kier joined their firm, so that it was a three-man partnership. And uh, the, this uh, firm has gone on then until today, still an active partnership. And uh, they have done work on schools and libraries, and of course, probably most noted is the concert hall that they did in Aarhus. But they have a wide variety of, of work, and I think you will see in uh, Johann's work that typical thing that we've really come to regard very highly as the standard of the, the Danish architecture. And so it's with great pleasure that I welcome Johan to speak with, to us tonight. Thank you very much for the warm welcome I have received here, not only today, but also yesterday. Uh, Knud has always said it this afternoon, but uh, we are educated at the same time, just after the World War. And uh, I remember we had only very few books about architecture, we knew very little, as we have been closed out from the free world for five years. And suddenly arrived some news from the United States. And uh, one day there opened uh, uh, United States Information Office, I think it was called, in Borg, uh, in Copenhagen. And we went there and suddenly we saw uh, the United States per periodicals. And suddenly we uh, saw works by Frank Lloyd Wright. We saw a house I especially remember of John Yearn. I don't know if I spell the name all right. Maybe it's so many years ago that you even don't know him. We saw, then suddenly one day came a book of Philip Johnson about Mies van der Rohe. And therefore, as it is my first visit to the United States, and I can only blame myself for that. And therefore, when I arrived to Chicago, I, on Friday, made a pilgrimage to the Illinois Institute of Technology, which I have seen so many years ago, but only in pictures. And I saw the famous corners and, and how it was. And still, I like it. Uh, we were so happy or well, we were the happy ones when we, uh, my partner and I, in 1953, won a competition for a high school in Aarhus. And now I will have the first picture, if it's possible. Thank you. And it's still there. And as you can see, it has some influence from American architecture. I remember that we studied very much the Saarinen General Motors Technical Center in Detroit. I don't know if you can see any similarity, but I think I can. Uh, we started as a two office for two men, and uh, in 1956, this house was finished in 1958, and. Uh, the amount of works went up and down. At the moment, we are 30 architects in the office. And we made high schools and such things, but I will not tire you about showing them, all of them. But I will go to the next picture, which is from 1979. It is a school for the Danish minority in in uh, the northernmost norm, part of Germany, the German Federal Republic. And uh, there was some, now I'll try if I can use this one. There it is. There was an old part here, which was built in 1922. It's a beautiful house, solidly built with granite and brick and so on. And we built this part of the building. With, which is, it's a very narrow space to build on. Therefore, we had to make it very concentrated. 
that we made this huge block with the classrooms on the perimeter. It's in three stories, sometimes four, and with a terrace, the ground floor, and there is a gymnasium over there. And uh, in the middle of the of the this huge block, we have the common rooms. The next. The next, please. There you can see the common room, which is on the ground floor, and there are some balconies in it, and it is top lit from a glass roof. We had very much difficulty to to uh, to make the next one, please. To to find out how to connect the old building and the new one. And it was a competition, and therefore, I, when we should make the decision, I took a pencil. We had, we had designed, we had drawn very much drawings about it, and I said, why not, don't you make it in that way? And then we, we, were, we, we won the competition, and then they said in the office, well, you designed it yourself, well, go to make it. And we had very much difficulty in making this glass house, but I think it works rather well. It's the old building to the to the to your right and the new one to the left. Then came in 1980. The next, please. Another high school on the islands of Zealand. It's called Frederiksberg. And now I was so happy, as Fries also always has been, to build in a wood. And uh, we therefore you could see the, the house is surrounded by a wood which comes here. And then there is a meadow which goes directly out to the sea. And we have closed the house to the outside and opened it to the inside where we have the classrooms here and we have the common rooms of this, this, this place here. And it is connected as a connection to the gymnasium here, also clad in glass. Next one. This is the uh, facade of the common room where you can look over the meadow, the romantic Danish meadows. Um, and I can say that all the pictures I show, as Knud also shows, as the pictures Knud shows also, they are taken in the summertime. The sun is always shining. It's because uh, it's, a, it's a common Scandinavian dream uh, that uh, we, dream, we, we think that we have some in, in, entirely summer the whole year round and with no wind and sun from morning to night. It's not true, but we, we think we have. Therefore, we're always taking pictures in sunshine. The next one. This is a connection from the school to the to the gymnasium, and it's a uh, picture which is uh, three to four years old. Now the wine has grown up and covering uh, is covering the whole the window there. Then, in 1977, we won a competition for a concert hall in Aarhus where I live, and the next one, please. This is the, the plan where it, it's, uh, the ground was uh, 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 an old, there's been old military barracks on it, and uh, I think we should always be lucky for the military, for the army, because they're preserving very good areas in the middle of the towns and have therefore reserved very nice places for us to build on. And so it is here. It is only preserved uh, an, uh, a little part of the old barrack. On the other side of the street, which is here, there is Arne Jacobsen's uh, town hall of Aarhus from 1930, 1937, 1940, maybe you know it, but I, I, there is a picture of it later. The house is a white one, 
and the, the access to the to the house is by a car there. There is a parking place here, and there is a, a food path be, uh, through a garden which is laid out here. There's a, fi a reflecting pool here. The next one. It's just to show you the facts about the house. It's um, it consists of a, a, a large hall with 1,500 uh, people in, and a small one with 325. And both of them are connected with a, a, a foyer, and they are parted from each other because you have to have uh, performances, performances in both of them at the same time. Therefore, you acoustically have to, to divide them. Um, Behind the, the halls are for the uh, large one, the, the stage, which as Knud said this afternoon, it has the same size as the Royal Theatre in Copenhagen, which means that they can move their, their uh, gear directly from Copenhagen and, and made a ballet or an opera on the stage. There are rehearsal rooms here, and here are all the cloakrooms and, uh, and offices. In the foyer, there, there is uh, the ticket office here, and there is a, no, the, the uh, furniture isn't shown here. There is a, a cafe, a bar here, and a cafe here, and on the next floor there is a restaurant. Um, when we made it, uh, we found, we, we didn't know it when we made the competition, but we found it was a very good thing that we have made it as three different parts. The foyer, the halls, divided from each other with a small yard, and then the rest of the house. That means that the most difficult thing to make was, of course, the, the large hall, acoustically. And, uh, and uh, these were, were the, the points where we had to change things, the angles and so on. But we could, we could draw the the different parts independently, because we didn't, we could change the, the angles of this building without changing anything in the foyer. Now we must have a picture. It was a rather large house for us, and we, it took us uh, time to find out the scale of it how large it, it, it really was. Therefore, we worked, we worked very much with models. And this is one of the first we made that shows the facade and the, the large hall which peeps up through the roof there, and the small one which is there. And here is the, the restaurant balcony. Here are the cafes and, and the, bar, the bar and the cafe and the, the um, the ticket office. This one didn't, was made in that form. It's to a guest room. And on the upper balcony is, a, is an art, a small art gallery. This was the, the model. Next. And here's the reality. And uh, to uh, protect the the foyer in, in, the, in the warm summer, which we dream that we sometimes have, we, we made a system of screens uh, for the upper part of it. It was uh, uh, vertically going screens, which was on the outside of the, of the house, and, and on, the, uh, on the lower one, normal uh, sunscreens. It's all made in white, uh, uh, white cloth. Next. Here it's packed up. Next one, please. This is part of the foyer directly with the main entrance. And there is something to tell about the foyer. It's, uh, it's open in, in contrast to many most other foyers, you, you have to, you can have, you, you are, 
you shall have 2,000 people in it because you can have performances in both, both halls at the same time. And therefore, in the pauses and when the beginning and end, you have to, to have space for 2,000 people. And uh, we found out and, and was agreed by the, by the administration of the house, which is built, it's built by the uh, council of Mons, and uh, that it should be open because it, it, it should be used as an indoor-outdoor place during the whole day. And it's open at 11 o'clock in the morning and closes at 11, 12 in the night. And it's free to all. They don't need to have tickets to go in there. And they're making small uh, free performances, music and theater and so on, in the foyer where people can go and see it without paying anything. And the house is used, there was a big discussion about it because some people said, of course, that it was what in Danish, I don't know if you have the word in English or American, uh, in Danish you, uh, it was a bad word, it was built for fine culture, fine, cult fine cultural things. But uh, this open foyer has, has done that uh, the citizens of all really uses the house. It's not, a, it's not a special picture, this one. It looks so very off. Next one, please. Next. There you can see from the foyer out into the park before it. And in the background, you can see the Jacobsen uh, town hall with the clock tower on it. Yes. Well, it's only a picture from the foyer. The trees you can see there are, are olive trees which were imported from Spain. And they grow not in pots but in, in real earth. The basement begins inside the line where they are grown. They are grown so much that we don't really know what to do with them. This is a rather old picture, four years old. Today they are disturbing the lambs and we have to cut them and the palms, we don't know what to do about it, but I hope we'll find out. Yes, I told you, next one. I told you about models. There was this, uh, the town of Aarhus was given from a state fund, which is a state art fund, uh, or they were asked, can we have bought a picture of a Danish painter, his name is Richard Mortensen, uh, can you use that? We would like to have it placed in your new concert house. And they came of course and asked us, uh, can you use this picture? And we couldn't find out and said, the only thing, the only place where it can be, it's on the gable of the, of the small, auditorium and, and um, then the the state fund said yes but you must demonstrate that it's the right place to do it and um, we couldn't find out to draw it then we made this model in a very funny scale for us it's one to 33 a third um, and then we sent pictures to the to the art fund and they said oh well it's I think it's we think it's wrong, you cannot use it because the columns are cutting it in pieces and, and it's yellow brick on, on, the, on the background and we don't think it, it goes. Then we called, but, but asked the painter. Then we asked the painter and then he, he wrote back to us and said, oh, how lucky I am. Uh, I have painted, on a, I painted it on a background, a yellow stone. And how beautiful it is, it's sometimes it cut, cut up, cut into pieces by these columns. I like it very much, put it up there. So, and, and the next one. So it looks in reality. Another piece of art which was given by the same fund to the house was uh, one made by the French uh, painter Pierre Soulage, but it was made to the house, and uh, 
he came to our office and was we had the model standing on the floor and he crawled around the whole afternoon and then he said now I know where it should be and then we can see in the next picture next this is a model of the place it, it's in the southern part of the uh, foyer it's a, a so-called triptychon hang from wall to, to floor and uh, it's made to the house yes next one and here it is in the reality that's seen from the other side here you can see the, the glass wall of the foyer and you can see perhaps you will be interesting. You can see down there there is a, what we call a convector which send hot air up in winter time course only. And there are these tubes are uh, a form of radiators which are uh, preventing the cold air from falling down into the head of the people going down in the, going in the foyer. And you can see these tubes are on the outside are containing the uh, uh, vertical screens which goes down. And they are automatically controlled by sun and wind. Next one, please. That's a model we made of the large hall. Uh, it was made, the, the, the foremost uh, purpose was to, to make uh, acoustical research in it. And this is the final solution. We had, I think, three or four solutions. We first, uh, we, we, we made the form of the hall, the, uh, let's say, the, the constructional form of it with the angle so and so. But as it, it's very broad because it shall be used, uh, the primary, it shall be used for uh, symphony concerts and, uh, and also for opera. And therefore, you can see there is a, what we call the orchestra screen. It's incomplete here. And here is the, the stage curtain. It comes there. And when it is used for symphony concert, then the, the, the hall looks like that. But when it's used for opera, then this uh, stage screen is pushed, pushed together to the back, back stage, and then you can use the, the uh, stage, the fly tower, I think you call it, or the stage tower. Then when the, the acoustical research was finished, then we used the, uh, the model for, for uh, uh, color, color, uh, research and, and lighting also and uh, yes please the next one it, it was so, so big that we could sit six people into it then we we got collaborated with the same painter as uh, as Knud told about this afternoon there's a man sitting in the middle and this is one of the men from our office and, I, and the, the, the girl on the on your right hand is the uh, girl who should who should make the curtain, and he looks as if he is rather. I think he has it rather well at that moment. You can see it from the bottom on the tables. Yes, it's a curtain uh, design you can see in the background, and and and. Uh, The, uh, what, what the, the weaver had made. Yes. And here is the reality of the hall. And uh, I talked about uh, the, the colors have been made, made by, by Emil Geigersen, all of them. And the, the, the screens you can see in the wall are for acoustical reasons, because you have to reflect sound from the stage down to the point in the hall where it had its, the greatest width. And also these side balconies are made for, uh, for, for acoustical reasons too. 
to to make the to make also reflections into into the uh, into the uh, middle of the hall. And you there can see the stage curtain. Yes, the next one. This is a small auditorium which has no stage. It's used for chamber music and for um, and for theatre and chorus and accordion playing and everything else. This was a, for us at least a rather large house. And then therefore it was very nice for us when suddenly there came next please. There came a client to us. It was a, a and a financial institute which owned, they had their office in this building. It's, a, it's right in the middle of walls. And this was what they had. And here is lying a, a, an art exhibition building. And here is an, a, a state library. And this is a courthouse of Aarhus to say nothing about it but the music, the, the concert hall is over here. And they came to ask us, it was, it was rather peculiar, it's, it's the first time I have, I have gotten a, a work of that kind. They asked us, is it possible in that place to make an addition as much as you can or as much as you think you can, is it possible at all to make this addition to the house? Then we said, uh, I don't, we don't know, but uh, we can try. Yes, try. And uh, we made this plan where we, there is a strange uh, thing about it. These two houses, which have, uh, this one is built around the century, it's beginning. This one, 10 years later. It's very solid houses. This one is the best. But it, 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 it's rather good houses, but it's very strange that they have so different directions. And th there is a ramp leading up to the, to the library there. And uh, we would try to connect these two houses. Therefore, we finally ended up with a solution of a, a, a house here with two stories, there is a, a, a slope here. There's two, two stories to this side and one story to this, and with a roof terrace on it. And on this roof, then we turned this uh, part of the building in, di in the direction of the ramp over here. And here we have made a small pavilion with the hope that one day we could build another one there. You can see our what we used as inspiration up there. Uh, I'm afraid it will never come, but now we have made this one. Next, please. Yes, there, can, there you can see the one story, uh, as it is a one story to, to the uh, art exhibition uh, site. And uh, in order to, we want it to, to be green, and therefore, we, we put this trellis on it, and it is overgrown. This picture is two years old, and it is rather much overgrown now. Next one, please. There is a little pavilion, and then there is a courthouse in the background. And there is a library over there, and the uh, the uh, office building there. So, no, no, yes, fine. It's uh, there is a roof terrace with a stair down to the garden with the uh, exhibition building, and you can see it's it's rather solid houses which are round, and we found it correct to make this as a light pavilion.
There's a funny story about this house, or there are many funny stories about it. We had originally we thought there should be a, a copper roof on this little pavilion, and uh, then the the client has well enough money at least to make a copper roof, and then they said, well, uh, we cannot we cannot use copper roof. Why not? We said. Yes, because our customers will come and say, oh, we're giving all too much money. They're using the, the most expensive material they, they can get, so we must find something else. We found that we have instead used uh, a slate, and uh, it cost exactly the same, but uh, it didn't look so expensive. But now, it, 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 in fact, we are all glad, uh, we're glad for it because it, it resembles the the, the shape of the roofs uh, on the other buildings, and, the, and then we put copper on, the, on this little lantern on top of it. Yeah. Yes, there we see the courthouse in the background and the pavilion and the basement with the roof terrace on it. And it was very nice to make. Yes. <laughs> then in uh, 1981, 81, we won a Nordic competition for a concert and congress hall in a little town in Finland called Pori. And this is the site for it. There is a river in the foreground. And next, it divides the site. We're standing on the site, and in, across the river, you can see the center of the town. And uh, it was a beautiful place, or is a beautiful place. And we have made a project, but we have not still began construction on this site. Next, please. Yes, there you can see this site plan with the, the house here, with the halls inside it, and the restaurant. And there was this uh, special case about it that you could come to it both from this side and from here, from here, and from here, and from there. And from the parking space, you were arriving here. And as we wanted to make a one single entrance, we created an, a, 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 a courtyard here where all the people who are going to the house are, 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 are um, crowding and go into the house. We made it therefore, we can see it better in the next picture. We made therefore colonnade in a square which uh, contains this courtyard I was talking about, where people come there and there and there. And this is an open colonnade, but sometimes we are putting windows in it where it goes to be a foyer. And, uh, and all the uh, uh, common rooms, caretakers and so on. And here we have the cloak rooms. And again, the halls are lying free into this uh, square. There, is, there was, uh, 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 it was rather complicated because they wanted uh, two halls, but they wanted them to be, they could be put together so that they, they could, they could, uh, they could be 1,500 in all in, in them. And when we departed or parted, there should be uh, 900 in the big one and uh, 600 in the small one. And it caused us very much uh, trouble because it's, we had to make a wall in it which divided the two halls. And it's very complicated acoustically because they wanted the two halls to be, to, they should be used independently too. And uh, it, 
costs very much trouble to make a, a double wall, which we can take the next picture. I'll, I'll go further with that. Next. Yes, this is a picture. There you can see it. We had to, to we, as the, uh, the, uh, the water is so high, we couldn't let the wall go down, so we had to hoist it up. And it goes up into this construction here. So here's a wall, and there's a large hall, and the small one. And this is stage area, and so on. And here is the, the uh, courtyard, and the fires around. And here, this is a river, and this is, the, here is a park with a lake in it. So we have plenty of water. Yes. This is one of the earliest models we made, but it's still the, as it was. Yes. This is the latest model we've seen from the other side of the river, from the center of the town, with the restaurant on your right side, and the open colonnade and the foyer with where it has got windows. Yes. You can still see the high construction which houses the, uh, the, the uh, wall which can disappear. Yes. This is a model of the hall where we are looking into the big hall from the small one and the, the, the um, uh, dividing wall has been hoisted up and, and all the, the forms you can see are, are made from acoustical reasons. The, the ceiling and the wall cladding. Yes. Then it sounds as if we are only working abroad. That's not true. But now we are going to London, where we were offered a job right out to the Thames there, this side. The, the, uh, during the war, a great part of the docks of London were completely destroyed, and, uh, and the use of the docks were, were, there were no use for them later, because they, they made a container, container port uh, uh, east of London. And, but there's only very much uh, retained of the, of the docks because they were so silly that they put all the ruins into the water. And now they're weeping because they found out that it was a a, a fantastic thing to, to, to use this area with the water for housing. And they're even thinking about digging all the rubble up again and, and shape the uh, old docks, which still are there, and use them as a, because they want to, to make an attractive housing uh, uh, quarter out of it. But um, yes. Then, of course, we began to, to, we were a bit anxious, because how are you building in London where you can find things like that, which is a Greenwich Hospital. And um, we were, in fact, inspired a bit of it, or not a bit, but rather much. But we went around and tried to find out when we, as Danes, arrive in London, what should we do? We would try to make houses like Danes thought English houses are or should be. And I would say we've got a very fine reception there. Of course, we have been working together with English architects. I don't need to say that. And also in Finland, of course, we have had, uh, had, we have had collaboration with Finnish architects and engineers. Next one, please. This is an old picture of the Greenland dock. 
as it was and as it still is. It was a, a dock which was used for for uh, whalers, so people who catch who caught whales and brought them uh, in there. And this basin, basin still exists, and the, the dock port still exists. But uh, it looks, it's not, there's not fields any longer around it. Next, please. This is how we end it. You can see the, the docks, the dock ports here, and the, the real dock inside here, which exists. We made this, we should build, it's right out to the river, and we had these two sides and a taller house here and this one. Yes, next. Well, it, it's, it's just a picture trying to show how it looks from the other side of the river, which also, of course, is important. It's all, uh, next please. Yes, this is a facade. And we are trying to use traditional English materials. And the basement is, uh, is Portland stone. It's a bit expensive, but it's a traditional English material. And the upper part of the house is yellow bricks. And the attic is uh, is a uh, black uh, metal plate. And we're using bright colors on the doors, which also is an English tradition. And the small balconies with a roof are also in metal plate. Yes. Well, it's just uh, it's uh, it consists of a, a rich variety of, uh, of flats. And uh, this is one of the, but, but some, most of them have uh, a two-story uh, drawing room, which are rather narrow. And to give it uh, a bit of uh, space, we made it through two stories. Also to get, uh, uh, really to produce this uh, fantastic situation to be sitting in one's own room and looking at the traffic on the, on the river. And if you have the view, in full, and there is a balcony on the on the upper floor. You enter by a stair, as you can see the beginning of, and on the on the, the top floor is uh, is uh, of course bedrooms. That many different uh, varieties, as I said, of flats, and there are sometimes there are two of these on on the t one like this on the top of the other one. And sometimes it's only one-story flats. Mason, it's uh, called in England. Maybe you call it the same, I don't know. Next. Yes. That's a thing which is rather uh, difficult to explain. I could use the whole evening to explain what it is. It's, uh, yes, this is a Danish church, but uh, I am consultant for some of the Danish churches. There are, we are seven of us in Denmark, which has divided the country between us, although we have not divided it. It's the, it's the government which has divided it and given us some districts. And uh, it's, a, it's a very strange job. We are doing the maintenance of some of the state-owned buildings, but not all of them. But all the churches, are we, act, are we acting as, as consultants for if they are making something? But we are not making the, the drawings or ma making the, what they have to do. The, when the, the, uh, there is a council for each church, an elected council, elected council, and if they want to make something, make, give a church other colors or other chairs or a new altar, they can find out so many things. 
they have to make a project and the most of them goes to an architect and then this paper the papers and drawings and such things are we getting or I'm getting for I have around 700 churches it sounds as much but we are not getting all of them each year good luck uh, there are 2,000 18 to 2,000 churches in Denmark and during 200 years around from 1100 no, 1000 the, the years 1000 to 1200 there were built uh, 700 churches and it's a fantastic thing with the primitive uh, things they had they, they could do the toil they had at that time and they could make, make so beautiful work uh, because it has been altered and, and rebuilt during all the years but still it is uh, wonderful uh, wonderful buildings which repeat history and and craftsmanship and the uh, meaning of architecture uh, during all these years next one you can see how how skillful they have been they have been the craftsmen who made it and this is not an outstanding example it's just an, what I would say an ordinary one but you can see the beautiful details on it so I'm taking care of them and next one but it, it's not only the uh, the uh, old ones it's also the new ones this is one of Knud Friis's churches the Elevankirken which lies outside Aarhus and if this the council for this church want to make any change any, any change in it it may be colors or materials or or the chairs or what I know, I know they, they have to send it in to the bishop and he then sent it to me and then I shall say if I mean it's okay and, or it isn't if it's Knud who has made the alteration I think I would say yes it's okay but if it isn't they don't need to, to ask Knud to do the work and the next one it's also one of Frises churches, the skull which he showed this afternoon. Yes, next. This is a job we have just got, just before I went over here. It's uh, the screen you can see on the pyramid. That's an existing office building which we haven't designed and then they uh, made a small competition with only two comp competitors they wanted they had a problem because they had a, a main entrance at that corner and a reception inside and they had an entrance there too and they wanted to make a connection between these two entrances and to make more space for the reception itself and we made this proposal which is a, a round glass box connecting the glass uh, corridors to the two entrances and you can see we have used the principles from the uh, concert hall in Aarhus from the foyer with the uh, sunscreens where you can control it when it's when it uh, in order to prevent too much hot into the uh, warm into the into the fire. The strange thing there is a, a, a machine which has been used for distilling uh, whiskey, but now they are not making whiskey any longer, so they want to keep it. It's beautiful metal and they use it as decoration and I think it's a rather nice idea so we thought they should keep it 
به تریل نرکن Okay, I guess you got off easy. Yes. 